start now with questions for the four presenters. Uh, Thank you very much. I have questions for Andrew and, and Friedrich. Um, Andrew, first of all, um, presumably UCT applies different admission criteria for different subjects, uh, like most universities. Um, now, one interesting thing, of course, is to see the distribution of, of, of applications and if people from uh, di diff different groups are, are applying for more or less competitive programs. Uh, so, are, are, for example, uh, other smaller proportions of black populations uh, applying for more competitive programs? And then, I think it's interesting to see how the process works comparing more and less competitive pro uh, 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 areas of study. So, for, for example, if medicine is really competitive, does the process work different there? To, what, to how it works in business or, or, or something else. Uh, on Friedrich, um, that's a very, it's, this is a very interesting issue that you're looking at. Um, I wondered if you'd looked at how long the couples had been together, because I think that could be quite an important factor. Certain types of people can survive as couples for longer periods of time, maybe precisely because of how they behave. Uh, I'm not sure if you'd control for that or not. Uh, but a more general question here is about the sort of selectivity worry by choosing to look at couples and people who are currently couples. Now, the people who are currently couples might have become couples a week ago or might have been couples for years. We don't know that, but they're couples. And, of course, there's other people out there in the population who are not, who may be quite different. And because they're quite different, may be exactly why they're not couples. So I just wondered if there's a possibility to compare the couples to um, th those that are not couples, as well as, as I said, looking at the, how long they've been together. Thank you. My question is for Miguel. And uh, I, I'm, I, I want to talk about the, the negative a uh, sign that you see on uh, on in increasing taxes that you s that you find after your treatment, and I'm concerned if this could be because uh, people do not really view taxes as an effective measure of uh, as an effective means of redistribution. So maybe if you had something more direct, like say you asked people that say we increase taxes, but at the same time we uh, had some program that ha gave a transfer to people, then maybe you would see a more positive impact there? Hello, I have a question for Frederick and then Andrew. Uh, Frederick, in, in the bargaining literature, it has been found that the partner age difference has, has an impact. And in your case, it's, it's not significant, but I was wondering whether looking at the uh, households headed by males only would have an impact on your results. If you had included uh, households headed by females, would you find uh, something different? And then to Andrew, uh, there, there was, uh, I think, on the proportions of uh, a non-race. In 2007, 3%, then 2013, 5%. And I'm wondering whether that there is an increasing trend, of, and it, because in some cases I found something like 74, is it an issue where people prefer not to reveal their, their race? And, yeah, and, and secondly, on the your CDCs, the cumulative density functions, um, you only looked at uh, black and, and white. Wouldn't you extend, and if you did, uh, what are the findings? Because I noticed that it, it flattens out towards the higher levels of per capita income. Thanks. So I have a question for Friedrich. Um, so I guess the one thing which worries me slightly is that your number of observations after you filter it is right down to 344. Um, and the particular problem I have is that your test statistic is an LR test statistic and we know that basically on this complex survey data which NIDS is that actually likelihood ratio statistics are really not appropriate because I assume that you've got independent sampling of all of these things 
which with the clustered sampling really is a problem. So once you kind of put a cluster correction in there, it kind of worries me what you've got left, kind of like uh, with, with that sort of sample size and whether you kind of thought about that a little bit. Hi. Uh, my first question is for Frederick. Uh, I was just wondering about your husband's language, uh, husband's bargaining power variable. Could you explain the... So, so husband's mother's education as a share of uh, all mother's education. Um, and the second question is for uh, Miguel. Um, I don't know if I missed it, but did you show us cross tabs for treatment versus control uh, characteristics? I don't know if I missed it, but... Okay, this is uh, about the Friedrich uh, presentation. I mean, I have a couple of uh, very technical points. So I will not uh, mention them. I would like to support the point made before about uh, the fact that some of those uh, characteristics that you call preference parameters, as a matter of fact, may also affect the, uh, the bargaining power, the uh, Pareto weight. Uh, and uh, certainly the time that uh, uh, the people have been living together is quite important. Uh, the number of children. I mean, if you have uh, two children, three children, presumably uh, the bargaining power must be uh, different. I mean, the equilibrium within the household must be different. So uh, it's uh, not clear the way in which you can uh, uh, handle that. Uh, because uh, uh, you'd like to make a distinction between uh, parameters which do affect the bargaining power without preferences, but certainly it is something that uh, has uh, to be taken into account. The other thing which uh, uh, I found a little uh, disappointing at the end, we are talking about inequality. So how much inequality do you have in, uh, uh, in those uh, households? Uh, uh, so we know that... Uh, uh, you cannot identify the uh, sharing rule uh, completely because there is a constant that is missing, uh, but at least you could uh, do uh, some kind of uh, uh, simulation analysis and say, okay, assuming that uh, uh, there is a, a, a kind of uh, normalization of uh, the data, I mean, uh, picking up a constant, what is the kind of inequality that we are generating? Is it okay that as in the paper that you mentioned at the beginning, Lee's and Sites, you are getting 50% uh, 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 of the total inequality is due to intra-household inequality in, uh, uh, in South Africa? I think it's, it's, it's very, very important to make, uh, to, 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 to make this. And my uh, second question is about it uh, to, to Michael. Uh, it's a little uh, related to uh, uh, the, 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 uh, the issue of uh, what about the control. But uh, because this uh, uh, international, I mean, uh, informational international inequality is important, uh, could we know uh, how many people in the population initially knew something about uh, inequality in Namibia? Uh, as compared to inequality in uh, uh, South Africa or as compared to inequality in, uh, in, in the U.S. Uh, because uh, there is always an issue with this kind of uh, uh, experiment on information, uh, which is that uh, uh, there must be already some information in the population, and the problem may be more on the way in which the information is spreading among people than... Uh, so uh, it seems to me that there is a, a, it would be important to have some complementary uh, uh, information about, about this. So we'll uh, start with Andrew and then uh, go in the same... Uh, Thanks for the questions. Um, yes, there are differences in the types of programs that people apply to. Um, I haven't investigated that systematically, but I do know, for example, that the differences between black and white students in the commerce faculty uh, are much smaller than they are in the science faculty, uh, which would suggest that better quality black applicants are applying to, to commerce rather than to science. So I can definitely take that a little bit, do a little bit more thinking about that. So, so thanks, thanks for that uh, suggestion and comment. Does the process actually work differently, the university process? For the most part, no, it doesn't. 
uh, I mean, different uh, faculties and programs have different requirements, but they all have, they all advertise those requirements, uh, and there's nothing, I mean, they're not really taking in stuff into account other than basically your secondary education results and, uh, and in some cases an extra test that's now come about, the national benchmark test, because the universities are a bit worried that maybe the secondary education is not quite a good predictor of, of how people will do in universities. So there's this kind of university-generated test um, that's, that's now also being used. Uh, in medicine, for example, they used to ask for CVs and references and things like that. But I think in the data that we're using, that's, uh, that's not, not the case for these years. Uh, trends in not applicable, yes, I think that's an important issue. So the students are, uh, many I think are white students who think that if they say not applicable, they're going to somehow be treated better than if they say that they're white. Uh, that's not the case. The university puts everyone who says, I don't want to say or whatever, uh, into the open group. Uh, along with the rest of the white students. Um, and so I would agree, yes, that probably there is some sort of sense. I, I went and actually had a look at the data, and there was some, definitely some white, what looked like white candidates from the very sort of higher end of the schooling. So they went to like elite private schools, looked like they're probably white students. But uh, So there is that, that, that trend. Um, and in the CDFs, now I haven't drawn it for the other groups, but that's a, that's a helpful suggestion. Thanks. Okay, um, I'm going to answer the question in the order in which it was asked. So in terms of the relationship length, um, length the selection, so um, I don't think we observe relationship lengths in the NITS data, but obviously this is an important factor. If it was, if we, if it was observed, we would have included it as a control variable. And then um, a related question was just the generalization. Um, so the idea was to restrict the sample to the persons we have, as, as I don't really think that just putting in a dummy variable for um, just for certain aspects, just for a four-person household, a four-adult member household, for example, is sufficient to account for the different level of bargaining power that we would observe. We would we would need to do a far more complex econometric analysis, and at this stage, I'm not I'm not exactly sure how we would do that. Um, and then, in terms of the the age differences and the male-headed households' heads, um, this is also somewhat related to Professor Bengyon's question is, so we wanted to um, separate effects that we expect only work through the sharing rule um, on household demands from effects that we expect may be also due to preferences. We do not have a price variation in the same way so that when we see changes in, for example, uh, the age difference, we don't know if it's maybe just because the older, uh, older household members in general prefer higher expenditure on medical, for example. Um, and that's not exactly clear. And similarly for male-headed households, um, there may have been some, some pre, well, some marriage market interactions or something like that that happened to, in female-headed households, uh, where so where households that identify as female-headed households that are not necessarily um, able to control. But uh, yeah, if I recall correctly, our results weren't that sensitive to it. We just, we just didn't want to do it. Um, in terms of the number of observation and LR tests, yeah, that is a very, very valid remark. Um, Ruloff and I are redoing the data on the, the um, upgraded net set to wave three. We're attempting to inc incorporate far more observations, and we're also looking to a few few more methods to test net steadiness because, yes, this is a very big issue. Uh, currently, we're looking at a sample that's yeah, quite a bit more, but, yeah, it's getting there. Um, in terms of the husband, husband maternal's education share interpretation, the ideas in South Africa, because this, this data set is a 2008 data set and our sample is of people that are between the ages of 25 and 65, the idea is that the husband's maternal education share gives an indication of um, potential wealth or access of the, of the partners pre-marriage. So we would expect that if one spouse's mother was better educated, then the other spouses, we would expect that, that person to have better um, access to education opportunities and eventually labor market opportunities or, or income even. Um, okay, so the bargaining power difference. So, yeah, we, didn't, we do not attempt to identify the, the sharing rule in, in this, in, um, in the paper presented. Um, we were, once again, mainly, mainly focused on factors that we do, not, we do know are not then correlated to other preference factors. 
but yes, this is this is a valid critique, and um, I'm not exactly sure how we would how we would control for this other than perhaps interacting those preference factors uh, with the distribution factors inside uh, the, that lambda equation. Um, this is definitely something to look at in terms of how much inequality. So, yeah, I, I maybe I, maybe I've gone through that a bit far. So, what we see is that that female bargaining power, at least as that is defined, is far is on average way less than, than male bargaining power in the households. But it's definitely, yeah, it's definitely worthwhile then to, for us to go further and, and look at uh, maybe a, a better accurate measure of, of inequality in the, inside the household when we, when we actually observe these things. Because we, yeah, we only observe effects of changes in the sharing rule and not the sharing rule itself. Good, thank you. Um, OK, so first about this balance. Uh, test like whether for the controls there's different between the treatment and control and stuff. So yeah, I didn't show it. Um, so the the survey was done with with mobile phones, and so the um, the randomization was sort of inbuilt in the thing. So I mean, it should be fine. They, it, it's fine. There's like uh, I think some for some treatments like some people are older, but in ways that are sort of stuff where. It, even if the randomization works, like sometimes things are imbalanced. I mean, with all the results, we put a bunch of controls of demographic and pretreatment stuff, and everything is the same. So th there's no problem with that. The issue of the, um, uh, whether people identify this uh, taxation with redistribution. Um, so actually, we do have a question on, on I think, general taxation and to spend it on, I don't know, on, on, pub, yeah, on stuff. Um, and from what I recall, actually, there's not much action there. Um, my feeling is that, so the one that we have here about the top tax, we, we were careful to emphasize the sort of that we are talking about the rich, taxes for the rich. And that we were saying thing, something like, so now I don't want to get the numbers wrong. I don't recall what were the numbers, but something like 60,000 rands per month. A person earning 60,000 times per month um, has to pay, say, on average 20,000 in taxes and keeps 40. You think that person should pay more of it? So I feel that this one is the one that maybe is like most clearly linked to emphasizing someone that earns 60,000, which for the incomes of the people we are talking about is something massive. Um, whereas the other one might be that it's interpreted in a rest, actually less rest redistributive way, just like, okay, you tax a bit more and then you offer more public service. And the last question, I have to say, I didn't understand it exactly. Um, so uh, we do have information on, on what they thought inequality in South Africa was. So we could check if uh, the proportion of people that said something lower than what we actually showed them. Uh, is that what you are saying? What, what, can, can you? No, I mean, uh, the uh, knowledge of uh, uh, inequality in other countries, in this uh, international... In yeah. this chart that you have shown, uh, how many people knew that uh, there were countries where inequality was much lower than in South Africa? So, well, I, I guess that the, yeah, I guess the best would be that. So, we, we obviously, we don't know. We cannot know what they knew about the others, but then I guess that by checking what they thought about South Africa relative to the others, like, we can see if... Uh... I, I guess the, the, the point here is to make a distinction between knowledge and sensitivity. By showing those charts to people, maybe they had some knowledge about the fact that South Africa was definitely much more unequal than other countries. But simply because you are showing this, this is a, a triggering some reaction from them. So it is not an issue of knowledge of information, it is something else. This is the point I want to make. So, I mean, in some sense, Yes, we want it to be something else. We want it to be something that makes people, like shocks this inevitability thing. It was not, so it, we wouldn't now advocate a policy of like, now we have to distribute information and that's what will work. No, we wanted to explicitly shock the perceptions of people and whether this happens through the information channel or through the sensibility, I, 
we would have to think about whether it matters a lot. Yes. But yeah, we would think about it. Right, so we have time for a few more questions. Thank you. Uh, so so I, I have a question for Lara. Um, and it's, uh, you, you know, you're, you're showing that, uh, that, the, that the poorer underreport ill health. Um, now that... But then your conclusions are all about, well, maybe... So, so you say then that the inequality as measured in self-reported health is, uh, is underestimated, and that's, that's true. But what are the implications of that? It seems to me that turns a lot on why the poor underreport ill health. Like, is it... Uh, you're implying at points that it's endogenous, that because they can't afford to be ill, they underreport ill health. But it could just be... Uh, information, right? It could be the links between education and knowing how healthy you actually are and, uh, you know, it seems you somehow need to benchmark, I don't know if you can in the data, you, you mentioned that you've got sort of objective measures of health and then you've got subjective measures of health and uh, it seems to me that the relationship between those two is very, very important before one extrapolates to saying you know, that, uh, that this has got huge policy implications for the delivery of health services rather than just the, the understanding of people about how healthy they are. Um, uh, okay, and then I, I had a point for, for Friedrich. Um, you know, I think some of the comments have, have been a, around the fact that you're, uh, you, you know, you clearly reduced your sample and you try to put it into a nice, an, a nice structure to, to help you make tractable what's already quite hard to make tractable by, by these couples. And, and I think a lot of the comments are about that the reality of life in South Africa and South African families and households aren't like that. So you might not be making things tractable and, you, and the trade-offs in terms of the sample size might just be too hard to bear. Um, so I'm not sure what you lose by opening it up to, a, a, you know, a more complicated version of the household, uh, a South African type household. Um, uh, that's the question. Then I wanted to draw your attention then to the, the questions in the NIDS data on who makes the decisions about this and that, the next thing, right? The so-called bargaining questions, uh, whether those can't be useful to you somehow. Um, in you know in these models and in separating out these these uh, these different effects, so there, there is this paper on the uh, on the South African pensions, because there was a lot of speculation in a similar type of literature to you, where people were just using cross-sectional data but talking about uh, unitary versus bargaining models of the household and doing exactly what you're doing. And there's this paper from uh, Kate Ambler out of the University of Michigan that uses those questions about, about who's making the decisions to try and come into that very same issue uh, more tractably. So that might be useful to you as well. Uh, yes, as a small point to Miguel. I, I don't understand why you look uh, uh, at the average reaction to the uh, to the uh, politician uh, speech. Okay, I, I I would like to see uh, what is the distribution of the reaction. As I would expect, I don't know much about uh, the political situation in South Africa, but I expect uh, opposite reactions from people uh, uh, sharing or not sharing the, the the view of the politician who is talking. So. Maybe a slide with the, with the distribution of the of the change uh, would have been uh, interesting. Maybe you have a kind of polarization of the reaction and this negative uh, sign you find is simply like a result of a, a reaction in opposite directions. All right. So then maybe you can answer questions. <coughs> Um, 
So I think that is a valid question um, about the transmission mechanism. And I do a lot of theorizing about it, but it, uh, it's tough to control for it. And even if I do control for objective health measures, I'm not sure if that would tell me anything about the actual trans transmission mechanism. Um, and also the SAGE data doesn't, is very much self-reported, except for symptoms. Um, one possibility, if I did want to do something looking at objective versus subjective health, is to look at um, the NITS data set, which has more objective health measures. But also, I'm not sure if it, it, it really matters what the transmission mechanism is, being if it's a, a lack of information or if it's um, you know, suppressing of health, of, of the idea of your health. Um, either way, the health needs are going unmet and that you should have better access to um, meet these health needs. Okay, so um, on the reduced sample and what do we lose? Um, so yeah, so when I initially started this research question, I, I, was, I was also I was far more interested in the households where we have six working age adults with children from each household. And, and um, I think the, the main issue for me, at least conceptually, is that we would expect the distribution factors to affect these persons differently depending on their relationship. So, so we would expect the, the balance of power between a, a, um, a married couple, um, changing those distribution factors for those to be different than those for the brother that also lives in the household with his own children. Um, and I'm not, I'm not exactly sure yet how, how we, would, we would apply this, but yes, this is most certainly the case. And then um, the bargaining question. So the reason that we didn't use the bargaining questions um, as li is like... Um, as it is presented is it's one, it's, it's ordinal well, it's ordered, so it doesn't give us the same sensitivity the other thing is we, like, there might be a difference between what, what the, the household members that, that is currently answering the questions thinks who, like, like he, the person thinks he is the boss or she is the boss, where this might not necessarily be the case, but we do use um, that data later on in a, in a probate estimate to see whether or not the distribution factors are indeed significant in predicting the results, and we see that, yes, um, they are in the same direction uh, predictive of, of those results. Um, yeah. Does that, is that all the questions? For you? So, um, about, looking at, about looking at the distribution of reactions, so, I, yeah, I guess we have to think about, I think what, indeed, what I had thought about and what is goes in the direction of what you said, I think that would be really nice is to try to identify like groups that might have been positively shocked, right? And so the way actually in some sense what I thought and what I was expecting is that the different in the townships would give us this thing and or different of like differences of the videos or like the, the way that the, the, the fact that the result seems to be so robust uh, across different instances like makes it hard to find uh, like variables. I was thinking more in terms of pretreatment variables to group like the make interaction effects on the basis of pretreatment variables. Um, and maybe we can look at your thing. I mean, it's, it's hard because like, for example, in, um, and in the Kailicha sample, uh, an overwhelming majority says that the ANC is their closest, so they support the ANC, or at least they say that the ANC is the closest uh, thing. So that would have been the people that you would have, in principle, said that should be sort of more convinced by uh, this type of thing. And there are very few people that report like in Malema, so, or supporting uh, the, the party of Malema. So, but yeah, we will we'll think about that. So. Any more questions? All right, then, uh, thank you, uh, everyone, for being here early in the morning, and thank you to the four presenters for four fascinating talks. Thank you.